against Postron here. And today I wanted to give my two cents on a very contentious topic right now, which is the new uh, automaton support and the call to arm support, as well as the removal of being able to use instant skills on the left mouse button. So as of 3.24, we won't be able to have a instant skill on our left mouse button anymore, which in case you guys don't know, basically just means that you could automate something if you were actually moving with the left mouse button. Since you're constantly holding down your move button, obviously perfectly whenever it comes back up from cooldown, you can put, I don't know, your guard skill, but mostly stuff like withering step uh, and also stuff like convocation. So there are a lot of use cases for this, but instead they gave us something else and that is the automation support. And while I'm not really sure what to think about the fact that left mouse button will be functionally not really there anymore, uh, I guess the reasoning is console, the reasoning is people who don't use the left mouse button uh, for movement, maybe a WASD implementation in the future. I understand that a lot of people are outraged about this. And personally, I would be lying if I said my knee-jerk reaction wasn't negative. But I got to say, after thinking about it more, I don't think it's actually that big of a deal. And I want to talk a little bit about the options that are now open to us. One thing to mention, though, that some people didn't catch, I think, is only instant skills cannot be used on left mouse button. So in case you're using something else for your move, you can apparently still use it or he misspoke in the video because he clearly said instant skills cannot be used. But before we even start about the changes that this will bring with it, I want to quickly talk about the gems themselves. First up, automation support. Now, it has a 0.6 second cooldown and is obviously instant. It does count as a trigger, which is important to know. And whenever something's off of cooldown, it gets instantly triggered. Now, with these changes, what doesn't get enough focus is usually the mana multiplier. This was the same thing when back Cosmic Damage Taken, I think, got completely nerfed by getting its mana multiplier increased. A lot of builds had to actually now implement something like a life tap support. So that is a big deal for some builds and it will be a big deal. In terms of what it does is it has the left mouse button functionality. However, you can bind more than one skill to it, which can be quite good. If you have multiple instant skills in your build, you can automate them all. However, there's also a reduced cooldown recovery rate here as well. But I want to mention this is a level one skill gem. So most likely what's going to happen is uh, it's going to scale to something like five. And then depending on what the quality is, if it's five or 10% CDR, it might even go into the positive. One thing I want to mention that I kind of had wrong the first time around is I actually thought the cooldown here would overwrite the cooldown of whatever you're supporting with. But apparently that is not true, or at least what people have told me. So it says 0.6 second cooldown. But this is more like a stance kind of thing where you can toggle this on and off and it doesn't have anything to do with the intrinsic cooldown. So, for example, for detonate mines, it does not change the proc rate, which for something like mapping is good to know. But let's get into the first application here, which I think is probably the most interesting one is what does this do to miners? Now, my knee jerk reaction, if you see my tweet as well, was very negative. But the more I thought about it, the more I'm actually in the camp of this might be OK and might even be a buff for some people, depending on how they play mines. I do not think we're actually going to have to use two buttons now. I think it's just going to be a little bit different. Um, now, you will need to use the gem now, which I apparently some people did, which I mean, surprised me. Apparently, people have space to sacrifice a gem for 20 percent detonation speed but then i still see people not taking the detonation speed right here so apparently that's a thing okay some I, i've seen way too many bills that don't even take this extra small point here but okay apparently everybody just has that space i think that is actually a big deal right because if you didn't do that before you actually have to sacrifice two gems now the support gem the automation support gem and detonate mines now this is a little bit awkward because what you used to do for mapping is basically you just have it on your left mouse button right you move with your left mouse button you just do this obviously i don't have a full setup here this is not a minor but you have like minefield a lot of explosions yada 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 but now you can't really do that anymore because your automation support is on right so even at bosses if you pre-throw Usually what you would do, you would just not move so you can pre-throw. And then once the boss comes up, you do this and everything explodes in a sequence. However, the more I thought about this, the more I was actually... It, it is kind of awkward at bosses usually if you do this, right? Like you're not going to unbind it every single time. Uh, so you're going to have it like here. And then, I don't know, you just can't move. You have to pre-throw. And then if they don't get one shot, now it's kind of awkward because now you have to stand still again before you can move again for people who use two buttons this was never a problem but i'm just saying for the comfiness it was kind of awkward and 
maybe a toggle is actually more comfortable, right? You can just toggle automation on and off and depending on if it's on or off, you're going to map or boss. And it should be a toggle, at least from what it looks like. And with the people that I spoke, it, it kind of seems to them as well. So if this is wrong, sure, I'll eat my words. But otherwise, I actually don't think this is that big of a deal. A lot of builds already stand swap from uh, sand stance to blood stance, for example, whenever they're bossing. So I just don't think it's actually as bad as I initially thought, uh, as my knee-jerk reaction would make you believe. And then Hex Blast is mostly unaffected anyways, because you cannot detonate the Hex Blast mines until there is an enemy nearby, so you can pre-throw at your heart's content. Second, we have minions. Now, I'm not really a minion aficionado, as you might know, but I can see it from the POBs. They are already quite socket starved, so this will be quite a big hit, especially if you want to automate different setups, which is a nerf, obviously, but that happens all the time. This is kind of like the shifting tides of whatever happens. Sometimes something is OP, sometimes it gets nerfed. But the one thing that is incredibly weird is the bone armor, right? So bone barrier here gives you bone armor and you were able to automate that, but you cannot do that with automation support because it's not technically a skill. So there's nothing to connect it to. So yeah, that's just kind of unfortunate, but I don't know. It's maybe just a stray. Maybe they have an answer to this. Also, Convocation not being able to be automated unless you sacrifice a support gem. Quite rough. And Convocation is not just a nerf for minion builds. Actually, also for a lot of these trigger bot builds, Sabo cast on crit or brand recall shenanigans or whatever, Convocation was very nice to keep the trigger bots on top of you so they don't, I don't know, proc their skills somewhere off screen where it doesn't do any damage. It was even something I used on Fire Trap of Blasting because it was so important to keep the skitter bots around and apply the ailments so I get the extra damage. So that is just a minor nitpick. And I wrote down some other skills here that won't be able to be automated anymore on left mouse button that now needs a support gem. And some of them are harsher than others because of their mana cost and whatnot, but otherwise you're basically losing a gem. Now, one thing I want to point out though is that I see a ton of people run around with very suboptimal gem setups. And I feel like you can remove a lot of their gems and their build would still be the same. Stuff like that would be, I don't know, a precision aura. Just so you get an extra 8% increased damage here and maybe like 20% crit chance. I'm talking about level 1 precision just because they chunked it in. Like, I feel like a lot of people just threw random stuff in there anyways because they didn't really know what to do. Or back when... Uh, Vortex was an instant skill. People used to do cast when damage taken, Vortex, life tab, uh, kind of just to apply chill. So while yes, it's never fun to get things taken away from you, I just cannot help but notice that a lot of people didn't really put much care into their gem setups. And now they have more reason to do that because a lot of builds actually didn't have much to do with their gems. That obviously changes if you have like a Guardian's Blessing setup or a EB mom set up with divine blessing or whatever or eternal blessing it depends um, but in general I don't think it's going to be as big of an impact as for example reddit would make you think at the moment now let's talk about the good things that are coming from this change and the first thing I want to direct you to is something that happened in the video with face run and withering step now in the background I want you to look very closely especially whenever withering step comes up in a second so it's going to happen right now boom all right, the elusive just started. Now, withering step usually falls off whenever you cast another skill. So, for example, what you have to do is you have to pick and choose. If you have something like an auto bomber or you're like a heister, you have to decide between withering step and phase run. It kind of depends. So, let's let it run and see what happens whenever phase run comes off cooldown. It gets procced, but your elusive does not fall off. This is quite a big deal, and it is a lot of movement speed, and I will be looking forward to using this on quite a few auto bombers. The next application is brand recall builds. In case you guys don't know, there are builds out there right now, with, for example, Armageddon brand, that do trigger brand recall to recall all the Armageddon brands back to you. They all overlap on a single target, and it can be automated with a trigger wand that is currently what people are doing with perfect crime you actually get double the procs now usually that's a little bit of a downside because they also have 35 percent less damage but what gets procced is the brand recall not the brands themselves so there is actually no less multiplier those builds just got quite a lot easier to make because they don't need the trigger wand anymore which is especially important for example because of the veiled chaos orb rework just something to keep in mind same thing is true for certain self-chill setups, which have been running rampant uh, for quite some while. Now, some of the more popular self-chill setups will be quite the same, 
but some other niche ones that also used this trigger wand. And a lot of them actually had to use a four second cooldown, which means you had to actually Ashling before. They will be a lot easier to make. And then also builds with multiple instant skills, which was definitely a thing, for example, for miners. Also, even minion builds, right, that have multiple instant skills that they now might be able to actually bind to just a four link three different skills in there. With that said, though, let's get to our second gem because I have a lot more positive to say about this one right here. Now, I am actually going to work under the assumption that this keystone is still here. The keystone called to arms. My reasoning here is that at first, I actually thought it had the same functionality, but upon further review, there are actually new things opening up. As well as that, there are technically support gems for Iron Grip, Iron Will, right? There was one more, I forgot. Uh, point blank, right? Uh, so technically, you could say that is a reason why they're probably going to keep the call to arms keystone. But then again, those are extremely old. I, I bet GG doesn't even know those exist anymore. But in any case, I'm going to work under the assumption that this keystone is still here because I think they would have told us. Otherwise, this will be quite rough, especially for all the generals cry builds. Now, what I want to talk about here, and this is something I missed is the wording. So, but let's just start out at first. Once again, 0.6 second cooldown, cast time instance. While the skill is active, supported war cries triggered automatically when of cooldown. Okay. It has reduced cooldown recovery rate. It has a 200% mana multiplier, which is quite rough, especially if you're a left side build and you're kind of leech heavy. You might not be able to pay that mana cost and you might actually have to get life tap into the setup. But I want to just talk to you about this one right here. War cries. This is plural. Now, this is actually something I did not catch the first time around. But this call to arms is actually not restricting you to one war cry. Now, I haven't played with slams in a while. I do not like the whole war cry rotation. I could not care less. Now, if it was, I don't know, for a greater cost, if it like an OP build and you had to press all those buttons, maybe it would be different. But right now, it's basically just an average looking build that also just has to press all those buttons. If that could be automated and that could be taken away, I am not sure myself right now. I don't know the archetype good enough. But if this is enough to make it more comfortable, if the timing is still fine, if you can figure out the mana, if you're specking into Warcry nodes anyways, and you get a lot of Warcry cooldown recovery, you can get around about over 100% right now, then that would mean it would make a lot of these builds a lot more comfier. Um, another thing here that I have to instantly say is, Getting Endurance Charges right now is pretty annoying for a lot of builds. Having to get Enduring Composure, which sacrifices a jewel slot and at least two passive points, is quite a big deal. Especially if you can't make anything out of this armor as well. And you're just using it kind of on the right side of the tree. But now with this Warcry support, at the cost of two gems, you will actually get Enduring Crime. Not only that, but you also get a little bit of Life Regen. Which if Chaos wasn't nerfed, I would also mention. But I don't think we're going to see those Chaos Gloves anytime soon anyways i think enduring cry will be a great addition to a lot of especially right side builds and on top of that a lot of builds that are already kind of here they're pathing here and they're getting this jewel they will now be able to even get that one point endurance charge same obviously goes if you're pathing on the outskirts here another interesting use case that i didn't even realize before uh, shout out to ventrua on this one is infernal cry it is a quite interesting way to get covered in ash Covered in Ash is quite a hard stat to actually get. So this is just, I don't know, an extra 10, 12, up to 20%, obviously, depending on the situation, extra damage. But yeah, that's about all I got for today. I can guarantee you that there's going to be more niche stuff that you can do with these new support gems. Whenever you actually itemize stuff like that, I think there are opportunities to be made. So while, yes, left mouse button will be sorely missed, I basically used it on every single build. I do think there is a silver lining to this. And if not anything else, it will definitely make choosing your gem setups a lot more interesting. But with that said, since I still don't have a slogan, see you next time.